America. And I think the thing with that is that everyone sees, again, Canada as this utopia, but Canada has some really dark secrets that they've been hiding for years that they don't want people to talk about. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Guy America Show. Uh, we're going to be chatting with the Truth Factory a little bit later. The uh, cat. The cat from the Truth Factory. If any of you guys have checked out the YouTube channel, her YouTube channel. Actually, funny enough, she's just up the road from the Igloo, I think about an hour and a half. So another Albertan. Seems to be a lot of podcasts coming out of Alberta these days. Definitely. But anyhow. I yeah. didn't know. She's kind of anonymous. I didn't know she she wanted you to say that. I didn't say where. That's true, but there's only, I mean, now and now. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. <laughs> I was just going to say something else, but I won't. Yeah, it's stop. Let's leave it as anonymous as it is now. So anyway, there's Graham chiming in before he's introduced again. Sorry, buddy. It's okay. Now I got nothing. You threw me off my game. Graham. Bo. Right on, buddy. She's got some new videos out since this has been in the can for a while. We recorded this probably a month or a month and a half ago. Six of what, December? Mm -hmm. Really? So it's been a month. It's been a month. So since then, the cat from the Truth Factory has come out with like a few YouTube videos. Are the protests in Iran a false flag? She did some predictions for 2018 and Trump's tax plan was approved in the far left. I won't leave that. Then Washington Post caught lying. So. It's like kind of like uh, news deconstruction, almost like no agenda or Corbett style, right? Yeah, something like really that. Really interesting stuff. We talked to her a little bit about net, net neutrality and a whole bunch of really cool topics, but she's got a real rational attitude about things and um, she just deconstructs it and then takes the time to go through it all and puts it in a nice, concise video. Very, you know, she... She'll 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 probably mention where she, her biases lay, lie and otherwise it's very objective, you know? Yeah, and... I, I do find a lot of her stuff has a bit of a Canadian twist to it too. So she has some Canadian stuff that you're not going to hear really any place else. That's right. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's if right. If you go into like some of the residential school stuff with the natives and the Indians and you get into the fucking, uh, Duchesse or whatever orphans from way back in the day, I forget how to pronounce that, but we'll talk about it's it a little Duchen- later. Duchesne? No. Du- it's not Duchesne. No, it's something with a D. Dutch sense. Huh? Jesus. Not, it's, no, it's, not, it's not that either. It's not that either. You guys will hear about it Anyways, later. we should but collaborate one of more on a Canadian thing with that's her. That's Canadian. You know? we yeah, should, we should. We should try and collaborate, you know, because there's a lot of stuff we could talk about. So that was that. probably, that's probably my best, my favorite part of her channel. She's got a lot of that Canadian twist of things that you don't really get a lot other places. Yeah. You know, it's too bad that someone won't do that more of a news deconstruction on Canada, but I just don't think there's enough people interested. No, I know. It's just, I don't know, there's not enough going on, really, I don't think. There's not enough fucking people. That's the problem. That's true. Yeah. When you have the population of a state. If one in ten people watches the news, that's only like fucking. Three million people three watching million the people news. people in Canada and watching the, the news. And that might not that might even and be a stretch. Lu- that might even be a stretch. And if you're lucky, if you can get one in a hundred of them to come on and listen to you bash the news the whole time. Or tell you that they're lying. So now you're down from three million down to fucking thirty thousand fucking listeners. If you can get them all, yeah. Wow, what a there shitty country. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing we can. Uh, it's okay. We have a carbon tax now. Everything's that's right. Be better. Everything costs a little more. Yeah. Yeah. Gas costs a little more today. It's going to cost. More well, to heat my house in minus fucking 40. We also have Michael here too, which is uh, good to see you again, Michael. Yeah, you You're going to have to eat the back. mic. Eat the mic. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. Michael's in here uh, interning. <laughs> interning, yeah. <laughs> Out turning. Interning for the Truffaut show. Yeah, that's the right. The Truffaut. See, it's almost like the Truth Factory, the Truffaut. Yeah. It's a good day to have me on then, I think. <laughs> bingo, bango. Speaking of like governmental stuff, we had this uh, energy... Uh, what do you call it when you audit an energy audit in our house, which, you know, they, I guess they test your energy leakages and like all these, like, you know, power consumption, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And they, they and you know what they end up doing? And I wasn't there for this. Otherwise I probably would have booted the guy out, but they, they kick all the, uh, 
they change all your light bulbs to from the normal. If you have normal light bulbs, they change it all to LED. Who did that? This fucking energy company that, that comes in and does a free energy audit, right? They probably, who knows who, what big corporation or government is sponsoring them to come in and do all this. To so put they came unhealthy into your house light and your lighting? Yeah. And then, you know what else they did? They so it just it, knocked on your door. No, 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 no. It was all organized through my landlord and stuff. Like he said, there's an appointment. Like it, it's not like it wasn't a cold so call. So your landlord's trying to save money. No, no, hang on. He's. He's, he, I don't know. Does he I don't want to get show? into that. I don't think so, but I don't want to get into that. <laughs> I'm getting but then they, out. but then they put a power bar with a fucking timer on it. So it shuts down your, your audio equipment and your, and your TV and stuff every fucking two hours or just randomly. So they have, and they have a Ooh, little you know fucking electronic think, box there that about, who knows what it's fucking watching or listening to. Yeah, it's called a smart it's meter. It's called a smart meter. It, for just a, inside electronics attached to a power bar. So they know what you're up to. I know. They know exactly what they time know. I'm I fucking drying my hair. Set and up in your house. But, yeah. You now. Nah, way to go, Graham. <laughs> now we're being fucking surveilled. Um, <laughs> geez. Some guy, some men in black came in. I don't and have just to worry like, about that. Shot. There's no way my landlord's fucking letting anyone in this place. I just, I, I I've couldn't never even, it. I've lived here so- like four years. I've never even met my landlord. I stopped by her store once, met her associate. Wonder cool. if she even owns this place. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? Yeah, Anyways, that's cheap. But you guys have been talking about some of the main. Like I've been sort of out of politics as well uh, for a little while, and the mainstream sort of narrative is going on. But you guys seem to follow it a little bit more. Was there what's what's new these days? Uh... Oh shit! I had this thing queued up, and now I lost it. Oh boy! Keep talking. Yeah. Well, what's going on? <laughs> That's not asking a question. Is not keeping talking. What do you want to talk about, Graham? What's I don't the know. Politics what do you guys? Today? What? What's? I don't know. You guys Bandian, are always sending links and Bandian stuff and, and interesting Trump things, and I just read the headline and skip right by. Trump and Banyan aren't getting, getting along. Is that yeah. true? I thought maybe that was all in jest or joking. Or it's hard to say. These it's a big things. distraction. Is it really? That's what so, I think. Yeah, I think so too. But wait. Okay, listen to this. I found it. Maybe it's groundbreaking. So hang on, is is Trump fire? Because he left a while ago, right? I don't know. This is all a fucking setup. You you, you don't think they? I think they're they just would never fun do of this. Us. Yeah, it's like a tabloid now. Yeah, you know, the see, presidency. That's why he left, so then they can but create that's what this makes distraction it great, too. You know. Hey, you ready? Here's a glimpse of the future. I'm Steve Kovac. I'm a senior correspondent at Business Insider, and I'm here with Sophia from Hanson Robotics. I fucking she already played this in an episode for you. Citizen, so this exact clip. Let's see what she has to say. <laughs> Hi, Sophia. How are you? This same clip. I'm fine. Hi. How do you feel about humans? You're like a married couple. I love my human compatriots. I can't I believe that. All the best things about human beings. This is fucking. Like I already played that on an episode with you. Really? <laughs> you sure? It might not be the exact clip, but I'm pretty sure it is. Because is it? She looked pretty good for <laughs> a robot. She has and no head. Humans and robots. No head along. or no hair. No I hair. Think yeah. Will become very close to their she's, she's cute though for a robot. Using them to expand the knowledge of their own mind. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. We already store lots of our knowledge on the internet. Maybe personal artificial yet? intelligence will allow people to offload some of their knowledge to a location more private. Can robots have feelings? Depends on the robot. I've been programmed to have feelings and preferences, but not all robots are like that. What are your feelings and preferences? I want to help people. Have you ever had a robot live in your home or work with you? So, have I been no. replaced by a robot already? You know, there are probably more robots in your life that you aren't aware of yet. Do you want to live or work with a robot someday? What kind of robots am I living and working with now? Indeed. Oh, come on. Oh, okay, that's good. Is that's indeed good. your default answer when you don't know something? Yes. <laughs> Have you ever seen Black Mirror? No, I don't get to stay up to date on much television. I have to wait for someone to show it to me. What do you think of the HBO show Westworld? I love Westworld and can't wait for more. 
I think everyone at Hanson Robotics really resonates with this show, or at least it reminds them of our laboratories. I also think it's a warning of what we should not It's all going to be pre-programmed, right? That last question gives it all away. First she so said that, that she doesn't have any time to watch TV. Just... Then he asked her about another show and she talks about it. So she's just fucking surfing the internet for something. Is there any real intelligence there? Or is it just fucking quickly looking for triggers? Quickly looking for triggers. I mean, unless it's quantum computing or, you know, or they're mm-hmm. crunching the numbers so fast, but it's not, it's not artificial. It's just it doesn't bullshit. seem like it, right? Huh. They're not going to show us that. That's all the, that's the underground stuff they abduct people with. Aliens? Yeah. The fake aliens. Motherfucking my lab. Soft matter. We need a my lab jingle. Intelligent soft matter. Oops. Oh, I was reading that Elon is Musk good. is going to shoot a Elon? Tesla. Elon? <laughs> Musk. <laughs> How would you like to mow my lawn? <laughs> Isn't it Elon? Elon. Elon. Alone. Sorry What's I'm he going to do? He's going to put a uh, Tesla, a cherry red Tesla into <coughs> orbit around Mars, I guess. Oh, I seen that. Yeah, I was David tweeting Bowie's him. David Bowie's Space Odyssey on continuous replay. Yeah, I was tweeting he's him. hoping it'll be there in a billion years. I was tweeting him and hoping that we could somehow maybe throw on a hard drive with a back catalog of the Gramerica show on there. He didn't respond. No. So <laughs> if he's doing things like that, you got to wonder what else is going on. I mean, that's like putting a ring on it. You know, he's just putting a little cherry red diamond into there. Why would he pick Cherry like Red? I don't know. Just that's the way he is. I think there's a story behind it, but yeah. I don't know it enough to tell it. Huh. He's just I'd fucking burning up money. government money. I'd probably no, you do it if you were doing it with other people's money. Nobody wants to spend billions of dollars of their own money to put a car in orbit around fucking Mars. But there is a tax dollar number. If it's taxpayer sure. money, then let's fucking throw, let's go put everything in orbit around Mars. Let's put you in orbit around Mars. No, we can't do that. No, I already failed the entrance. Yeah, you yeah, we won't make it. I won't make it. <laughs> well, what else is already in Grandma's orbit around Mars? kidneys will break down halfway to Mars. That's my question. Phobos. That's it? So it's going to be Phobos in this Tesla? There's, There's probably a, a bunch lot of, of other stuff. It's pretty small, though. Maybe it can't even hold the orbit. There's Phobos and the, what's the other moon called? There are two, two moons on Mars? Uh, I don't know if there is. I'm not up on that right now. Sorry. Google's not plugged in. Hey Siri, how many <laughs> moons does Mars have? The answer is two. Oh. Phobos and Deimos. Oh yeah, right. That's right. Bingo bango. So what do you got for me? Well, I mean, you know, Michael's here with us. He's usually got something in his pocket. I don't know. Uh, so what else do you want to know? Political or I don't know. Do you want to see the last thing I looked up? Is that what you're down and Graham going deep? It's a profound UFO quote of a week. Words to ponder and critique. Profound UFO quote of the week. So around Slosnock, many UFO reports have been received from the Ministry of Defense, which obviously and logically means that they know very well where they have to land and what they have to do. It is remarkable indeed that the Hungarian newspapers and general newspapers everywhere reject the reports of the authorities. That's Jorgi Keletai, the Minister of Defense in Hungary, in an article by Attila Lennart entitled, Ask a Question to the Minister of Defense. George Keteli, are you afraid of a UFO invasion? And that was from Nipsvavda, Budapest, August 18th, 1994. 1994? Yeah. Oh, August 18th. Yeah. Is that your birthday? No. Not even close. Mm. 1994 is the year Cobain died. 
all I can think of. What was it? Did he? I can't believe he died that young. 27, yeah, April. No, I don't mean young. I mean early. Like, um, 1994 seems like his thing was just taken off back then. Well, it was. <laughs> <laughs> it was devastating. Yeah, at the I time. I was just out of high school, so I loved Nirvana you yeah. know, all through high school. Yeah, really. I mean, they were only on the scene for five years. Mm -hmm. Three years really hard on the scene. Smells Like Teen, Teen Spirit came out in 92. So two years after his fucking breakthrough album came out. I really got into Primus after that. Why well, Nona's got a big brow beaver. Yep. Swinging it in the air. She strokes it all the time. You guys seen them live? It's awesome. And then one day that beaver tried to bite her. <laughs> I've never seen Primus live, no. <laughs> Are they still touring? You think old Primus is still around? Well, he's always mixing it up. He's got all sorts of different things. He's had the... Uh, Colonel Claypool and the famous Frog Brigade, I think it was for a while. That was pretty wild. Colonel Clank. I saw him in a hard rock in LA. It was pretty dope. Oh, I had a new jingle. Fuck. Oh, I got a listener. I got, okay, I got a listener email here about that. What kind of hey, jingle? Did you listen to the jingles that I've been forwarding you? Because I don't even know if I've responded to the listeners yet. Because I feel like I'll check what I got for jingles. What do I got? Hang on. So I got right some. Now? I got some uh, spam gram. Hi guys. Not sure if this was a recent addition or not, but love the about us section. Great descriptions. Especially love the fact that there's literally no point in listing Darren's contact deals there. <laughs> As there's a high chance the emails will be forgotten quickly. <laughs> Clearly the last few emails I've sent through to Darren requesting the all in believer jingle as a ringtone have been put aside oh, for fuck. more important editing <laughs> or swearing at computers, which does actually pay off. I've heard some real shit sounding podcasts lately compared to Grammarica. Anyhow, any who, any ho he says. Thought I'd let you guys know about the about us section is cool. Oh yeah, in response to Darren's comments regarding whether or not a doctor or PhD can write prescriptions, nope. Sorry, dude, can't help you there. That was Dave from Aussieland. Cheers from Aussieland. Oh uh, yeah. So yeah, Dave, I think uh, you know bugging Darren about it on air will definitely um, get his attention. So yeah, that's probably get your good, fucking blackballed, Dave. That's probably now good advice. Blocked. That's probably good advice for people if they if Darren's not responding, especially with jingles, to just send me an email, razzing him, and I'll read it out on the air, and then he'll probably pay attention. Okay, here's a new jingle. Oh, he's just playing it from his phone. I got a couple jingles to play. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm playing it from my phone. That was James, isn't it? I'm actually going to, uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to take a, uh, a course. No, I'm going to take, I'm going to take an afternoon. I'm going to take all of our jingles because some of them don't get played very often. And some of them are, some of them are like six minutes long and they're more like audio montages than jingles. And we've actually got, I would say we're closing in on like probably 60 or 70 little fucking bits or songs that people sit in. So I'm going to put them all together. And it'll that be was the more like jingle fade episode. music. I was gonna do it for Christmas actually, but uh, I got lazy. Here's another one. We have a synchronizer. Oh man! <laughs> what was that? The synchronicity jingle. Oh wow. Here's another one. Oh, well, wait, hang on, uh, hang on. Save, save some of them. 
you can't just. Well, I feel bad because now you've, <laughs> I've had them all for a while. So I feel like if I don't play people's jingles, then they'll stop sending them. Okay. For details, information, and to donate, go to www.cragerica.ca slash gasa. G-A-S-A. That was a good one. That's from Crazy Billy. Thanks, everybody. Crazy Billy. So here's here's a... One more. Beep, 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 boop, boop. This is a simulation. Wait a second. Okay, Felix is getting lazy. <laughs> I thought that sounded familiar. Well, as long as I'm playing this jingle, maybe I'll run through some social media. Sure. And I got a cool email to read before it gets too late because it was Christmas. So. Xmas? What do we got uh, on the bio? I'm on number 237 from Splendalicious 1999. Interesting, but I didn't get the pure consciousness feeling from this guy. Maybe he should quit the meat. Uh, on episode number 260, Grammar Cuts. Talks debt-based society and Federal Reserve. R.E. the Bone Cancer Girl. I hope the GoFundMe page works out, but please contact Dr. John Bergman. He is a chiropractor in California who taught psychology and ask him about possible cures for this girl. Watch his podcast. He treats the body holistically and talks about it in a way that is easily understandable. Maybe he could offer advice for this girl too. He would be a fantastic interview as he is very knowledgeable and funny too. Happy New Year, by the way. Love the show. Did you add that Dr. John Bergman to our wish I, list? This was this is only fifty two minutes old. This comment. Huh. I'm reading it for the first time too. Uh, on number two sixty one, the real life superheroes be super spliff rollers, so you can get people to chill out and forget about crime. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. Ah, uh, we have from Nick Bit in the morning, boys. From Joe V, Uncle Joe, bitches. Uh, what else we got here? Grimerica sending out good vibes is the best jingle. We got Bless Up, boys. Can you guess who sent that in? Coop. Come on. I'm not going to read that one. Not going to read that one. Ooh, here's one on the um, Anthony Peak episode. Or Neil Kramer, sorry. Personal fulfillment is sacred work? Question mark. Well, there's your tipping point right there. This is why you're off the mark, Neil. That is not sacred. That is selfish. On number 260 again. Oh my God, man. You don't go warp within the solar system. Damn it. I'm a doctor, not a propulsion engineer, but even I know that. That's from a Star <laughs> Trek somewhere. What episode was that from? That was from 260 again with Tan, Tan, Tomas. Tomas and and Alan. Yeah. Um, Darren, I don't agree with the guy about the Neil Kramer. Well, I don't and agree with lots of the comments. I'm just telling you, I think it is a sacred sacred work. Is it? Yeah. Self fulfillment. Well, if your self fulfillment is putting a fucking fire red Tesla in orbit around Mars, <laughs> that's sacred. cherry red. Cherry red. Well, fire, fire engine, red. Fire, fire engine red. red. Fire. I think that's as far back as I can go. All right, buddy. Okay, I got a quick one here. So this is from Ryan. Ryan? Yeah. Ryan from the chat? I was going to say uh, first time, long time. But... Sexy Ryan? So hey, buddy. Or crazy Ryan. Merry Christmas and a happy new year. So it's Friday night, Saturday morning, 2 a.m. And I just got home from my brother's house and saw your upload and put it on. I was going to tell you something, but now I forgot what it was. I'm listening to Ooh, your is podcast. This a drunk? Is this a drunk email? <clears throat> no, it could be. It's too bad. I'm no listening to your podcast intro and typing this email. You guys are talking about all the same things me and my brother and sister-in-law have been talking about for the last three hours. <laughs> Way too much detail to get into, but let's just say Project Blue Book YouTube videos were watched and the stupidness of fidget spinners, weather mod, and stuff was discussed that I'm getting kicked out of the synchronicities I'm hearing in your intro like a flood. You and Darren got your fingers on the pulse or something, man. 
And lo and behold, my highly intelligent Afghan war veteran little brother wants to talk about flat earth, rockets, chemtrails, Van Allen, radiation belts, Bill Nye, the Berenstein Bears, CERN simulation theory, and moon landing fakery. I told him to check out Grand America, of course. I had quite a few of the Christmas trees my brother saved up for this weekend. I have obvious confirmation bias, but your intro full of synchronicities and give me the warm and fuzzy Christmas Grand America feelings. Oh, that's good. I hope you and Darren and all your family are staying warm for the holidays. It's cold as shit here. It was cold as a motherfucker that's here Ryan for Ryan from Kansas. I remind you, I want to jump back to another uh, social media. Because we did get, uh, I got to make the wallet still, but someone tweeted us today and, and uh, said they want to give us some Litecoin and that we should make a Litecoin wallet. So I figured, what the hell, it couldn't have hurt to make the wallet and throw some crypto in there and see what the fuck happens to it. Because maybe it'll be worth 20000 one day. We were talking about Litecoin way back when we yeah, first Yeah, the problem is with like Bitcoin now is you can't even do a simple transaction. It costs you like fucking, you're 20%. paying like a 20 or 30% mining or transaction fee now. Did you buy any Ripple? Ripple. Yeah, Ripple's another Ripple crypto. sticks. That's yeah, what I'm saying. You should we buy, don't have any fucking cryptocurrency. You should have bought a bunch of Ripple. We had some. Because it went way up. Some we went. Sent, it, sent it away. And then the other crypto we had, the advice was from somebody I, I, uh, you you agree with? I agree. I agreed with, and I still, you know, if he gave me advice again, I would listen to him. But uh, it was actually the guy who had sent it and was like, "I suggest that you convert this to real money right away, sooner than later." And then, like <laughs> three weeks later, is worth ten times as much. <laughs> but I figured out the other day, like if we still had that that like fucking three fifths of a bitcoin, I sent to the wrong, the wrong person, person when it was at like two hundred bucks a piece, it'd oh, be worth no. like fucking eleven. Grand right now. No way. Yeah. <laughs> bum, 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 bum. Could have rented a fucking new studio for three years with that. Yeah, something. yeah. Well, maybe a year. Um. Okay, so I'm gonna read this comment just because. Uh, pretty good one. So stoked, dudes. So stoked for being born in the same galaxy on the same planet at the same time as you two. Life wouldn't be as cool without yous. What are the odds? I thought that was pretty nice. That is good. Thanks, nice. Rossi. Yeah. Those ones that shines through. Put a smile on my face. Yep, you bet. Nice yeah. feedback. If it wasn't for all the listeners uh, getting involved and all our <coughs> new friends and guests and all that, it just wouldn't be the same doing the show. At this point, we wouldn't we have can, one. At this point, we can't even stop because we're just, it's not even just us anymore. It's, it's, bigger, yeah. than it's yeah. bigger than us. If we stopped, yeah. we'd just wreck up the chats and probably fucking come to a grinding halt and. I don't even want to know what we'd be responsible for if we stopped the show at this time. Did we talk about support yet? Grandmarket.ca slash support. <laughs> and the chat. people supported the show, it'd be less sick of podcasts. Slash dot .ca slash chats. Dot com. Does, what yeah, well, first support the show. If you can, honestly, guys, that is the, uh, you know, the way we're going to go. We're, we're not, we're not doing ads and we're not going down the other routes. That shit's not happening. So, you know, in order for this thing to keep chugging along and keep growing, we need you guys to help out and take on uh, some of the producership and everything else and some of the content, which you guys do by spamming Graham and sending in your stories and your synchros. And that helps keep the show going. And um, as we roll through winter, we've got our monthly subscribers and they help out. We could definitely use a few more of those. We really don't have that many. I think we're still sitting at, I think we finally hit like 0.7 or almost 0.75% percent. Percent of support. So we're, we're creeping up on 1%. So Well, that's up from 0.69. So. Oh, yeah. Right. No, it's, it's, it's slowly growing. Yeah. yeah. No, it was at the 0.69 was just so a fucking what's that? joke. That's like a... It was, was it? it was already That's like at seven percent. Oh, yeah, yeah. I had already done yeah, the math to the point seven that. thing, and then I just threw that. in the. So what are the chances? It's actually like point seven something, but I just point six nine was funny. <laughs> what a dick! But I mean, before it was at like one tenth of one percent, so it is creeping up slowly. Um, let's see if we can get to one or two or three percent. I mean, I would like to see that the value for value model works because all these other people are, you know, cut whether they're cutting interviews in half or locking off their back catalog or you know. All this stuff that just, I mean, honestly, it's just too much work. I don't want to have to do all that work. Oh, come so, on. That's not the only reason why. I mean, it's, yeah, well, it's one of them. It's a lot of work. And also, I mean, the main reason for me is always that I find that you'd cut your reach. If as soon as you delete the back catalog, then all of a sudden you've got 220 episodes that are just dormant. Yeah. So. Yeah. 
I don't ever want to have to go down that road. And I don't think, I think the future is more aligned with uh, the way we're doing things anyway. Yeah. Not I mean, forcing people to pay. At the end yeah. of the day, you're competing with piracy on the internet. It's yeah. pretty widespread already. So yeah. we'll just fucking keep chugging along and you guys can maybe get us up to one or 2% and get us past that point where we're. Yeah, maybe five to ten percent one day. Like, ah. write that down in your little 2018 my affirmation manifestation. Ooh, thing. We should fucking throw a number yeah. in there. That yeah. would be a good thing. Sixty nine percent. But big thanks to the people that did do support the show because if it wasn't for those people, there would honestly not be a show that the show wouldn't be two hundred and some episodes long without the people that do support the show. So don't just thank us for doing the show. Thank the uh, the people that do sign up for monthly and do uh, help us pay the bills, which are growing. As the show grows, the bills grow. So with those people that have helped us stay in business, keep chugging along, yeah. check out the chat. So that's grandmarker.ca slash support, guys. Sign up today. Do all the free stuff, too. Review, share, all that stuff. Sign people up for the newsletter. And join up for the chats because a lot of people are... I mean, we get a lot of great feedback from the chats where people go in there and... Uh, whether they're making new friends or making connections or whatever they're doing with starting podcasts or fucking playing Dungeons and Dragons and shit. Uh, there's definitely some communities going on in there. Some podcasts have spat out of there. Yeah, quite a few. Michael's in there now, too. Michael's right? in the chats. Darren yeah, get, Darren, he probably gets kicked out from Darren every once in a while. No, I won't. If I kick Michael out, he ain't coming back. So <laughs> <laughs> I take it personally. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cyrus, no, I come back. Cyrus still hasn't come back. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. He changed his name to Darren's mom and think and he's parading around in there and <laughs> thinks he's Darren's not gonna mom's get kicked. In there. Darren's real mom is in yeah, there. <laughs> exactly. And thinks he's not gonna get kicked out. So <laughs> how come Darren's got two moms in the yeah, chat? I probably earned that one. But fuck you, Cyrus. The chats are a lot of fun though. I appreciate you welcoming me in. Oh yeah, there's tons of interesting conversation to, and interesting I'm sorry articles to and yeah, Michael's just pre-apologizing now for his chat behavior. Yeah, the chats, <laughs> the chats spin into Zooms all the time, so people are fucking... So should we... Like, I yeah, actually, actually hopped on, you I know hopped what? on last That's night. a really good point to advertise it. So so these guys from Cruising with Steak, and there's Jerry and 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 uh, Grim Steak, and, and uh, who am I thinking of? I keep coming up with D&D &D names, and James... They uh, they always throw these Zoom links in there, and there's a whole shitload of people just get on the internet together, video or audio or whatever you want to do, and they chat with each other. I mean, it's fantastic. They sit there for hours and just chit chat, you yeah. know. So it's a great community of people who are just open minded and chatting about stuff. And I mean, there's some really really good conversations and a lot of love in there. Yeah. And people, not, they, not and a you lot just of go, negativity. You can just follow in the chat. It's a super easy thing to open up the Zoom app or whatever and get in there. Not a lot of negativity, exactly. Boom. If you yeah. if you pop in there a couple times a day instead of going on your shitty Facebook, you'll probably feel better at the end of the day. Oh, totally. And Grimsteak will tell you that he loves you once yep. or twice. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So do that. And it's in serious. And, yet, it's in and, you, serious. Know, and you know it's, what? Grimsteak's going to come to contact at the cabin, too. Hmm. So as cool. soon, if, I, if we let him know where it is, he's going to he's saving his holidays. For so it. just so people Perfect. know, the chats is a perpetual chat that we do in discord and it's just always yeah going. i've got a lot of feedback of people that say it's a little bit fast moving but i mean you just kind of get it you don't have to what keep up with that? everything in there oh yeah you can't like, you, you can't, just gotta drop you can't in start and, going back you no. just pop in and see what you stumble into yeah you there's too, too much going on yeah actually jerry's working on a little platform for us where we might be that might be a little bit more um, a little bit more easier for a little more slow moving where people have profiles and things like that. Can he make it where the font's a bit bigger so I can read it without my glasses? Rambo font. Seriously, like it's that's the one di difficulty. Why don't you me. just it's yeah, fucking like so? I think there's a setting on your phone, bro. What? No, there yeah. isn't. I checked. Yeah. No. He checked. I checked. He checked. Okay, well, uh, we do have to jump on with Jeffrey Tucker here right away. So I guess we're going to have to wrap this up. Thanks, Michael, for coming by. It's a lot warmer. Yep. A lot warmer than last time. Sure. And uh, I'll bring yeah. it. Yep. Enjoy the chat with the cat.
All right, so tonight we've got a special one. We have the cat from the Truth Factory on. Some of our listeners may have heard her, heard her recently on the Tinfoil Hat episode because it kind of corresponded with when we were on the show and they were on our show and listeners were requesting the cat's presence on the show and then uh, we heard her on Tinfoil Hat. So it's uh, we're really excited and happy to have you on the show. Thanks for coming on, Cat. Oh, thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, your YouTube channel, The Truth Factory, which obviously I'll put in the show notes, has is, is turned into quite the, uh, I mean, you've really, like, it's not even that, I don't even think you've been doing it for that long, but it's just blowing up, it's exploding, so congratulations on that, for sure. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, I started it in May, so no, I think I we're just, that. I don't know for yeah, I don't know if I'm at 40,000 subs yet, but it's, it's happening pretty fast. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I mean, just... Yeah, I just quit my job, actually, to do this full-time now, good. which is incredibly exciting. Good for you, man. That's awesome. What sort of model? You. And you're running, like, a, just a value-for-value value model for the most part? Uh, what 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 is value-for-value value model? <laughs> it's like, well, we just, we don't charge for anything. We just hope people will pay. Yeah, I, I mean, I have a I have a Patreon. I didn't I didn't intend to have that. Um, subscribers of mine told me to get one, and I said, okay. Yeah, if people want to if people want to give me money for doing what I love doing, why not? That's great. And if I can do this full time, I'm obviously I'm not making a killing doing it. I'm kind of going back to my old college days where I might have to eat ramen uh, to get by, but that's worth it for me. Yeah, no kidding. Worth it for you because you see such potential in this. Like, obviously, you know, you're getting getting some so, so you don't have any corporate sponsors or ads or anything like that so no. you're, you're getting donations from your listeners and you're seeing that there's a obviously that it's resonating with people and there's huge potential for this so that's what you mean well i just mean it i don't i don't care where this goes i mean i would be happy staying i mean obviously if it gets bigger that's great because more people can hear about it um but i'm happy as an artist scraping by just doing what I love. I, I don't care if, if it you know necessarily takes off more than it has now. I'm just enjoying the experience that I have. I haven't done any advertisements. I haven't got to the place where I feel like I have to. And if I don't have to, I don't want to. Um, YouTube, unfortunately, doesn't doesn't pay a whole lot. But I mean, if they don't demonetize my videos, that always helps. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think they demonetize a lot. We've got a couple of our videos that ended up monetized from the artists that were in them. We used a song we shouldn't have, and mm -hmm. that yeah. was a lesson learned. Yeah, but they'll, I'm, they'll, yeah, they'll try to get you on anything they can. I think. Yeah, that's just it, and that's why I think. I mean, we use that's kind of why because we looked at advertising and stuff like that too, and it's just to do all that. I mean, Libsyn just adjusted the way they count stats, and it cut cut our downloads. You know, it cut mm -hmm. the stats of our downloads in half. So, I mean, if we would have had advertisers then, we would have been like, you know, fucked. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I just feel like that model's doomed. It's It's got a couple, you know, maybe a half well, a decade or well, a decade look, look, left. Look what's, look what's happened on YouTube. I mean, anybody talking about anything that's not left, like, the, you know, any kind of right topics. You know, here, you've got these cartoons talking about, that are showing <laughs> kind of this pedophilia that are getting away with it you know, at least connotations and it's not, not good stuff. And then you get the, anything right or talking about something that, you know, doesn't match their political view gets um, relegated to the back or, or demonetized. Absolutely. I had a video on Las. I had a, a few videos on Las Vegas and of uh, the shooting. And obviously those were all demonetized, but one of them they took down and they, and they made it private. And they said it was because my meta tags were wrong. And I wrote to them and said, no, they're correct. And they said, okay, we'll send that off. Um, two months later, now I, I've just wrote back to them and said, okay, did you, did you get an answer on that yet? And they're like, what are you talking about? So I had to send it to them all again. And then today it says, oh, no, your meta tags were fine. So there was two months there where they just took down my video about this Las Vegas shooting. Well, now it's totally irrelevant news. So I, I think they are. They're trying to censor certain voices that they don't want heard, right? Exactly. So let's talk about like well, your... Luckily, you, net neutrality will fix all Oh, that. my God. Well, let's... We'll, <laughs> well, hang on. We'll get into that because, you know, I watched a great video you did on that. I mean... Oh, I want to get into your, I want to get into your concept before we like, so people know sure. what, what you're, what you're doing, because as we were discussing a little bit beforehand, we, we, we almost went down the route that you went, that you went down where we're sort of more like 
media deconstruction and, and truth, or at least like, you know, exposing things mm-hmm. that aren't being exposed and talking about the other side of things. And you do it in a very, very non-dogmatic, fair way. I, I, I think like you present both sides, you talk about it, you talk about where your biases are. I mean, it's really, really resonates with what, what we talk about here and what we were thinking about doing our, ourselves. So let's talk about a bit about your, your whole, like sort of not your goal, but you know, what you're doing with your channel. Sure. Well, I mean, I, I just take stories that I find interesting because if I don't find them interesting, nobody else is going to. Um, but what I've really focused on in the last six months is exposing the mainstream media for what it is exposing these large Silicon Valley uh, tech companies for what they are and exposing just like their uh, message, I suppose, and what they're feeding to to the masses. It is just not uh, transparent, right? What they're really trying to do. And uh, I try to expose why they've been set up in the way that they have and what they're trying to do. And it's all politically motivated. They all have their own agenda, right? Yep. And that comes out even net neutrality in my video. I talk about that. Like they have their own motives behind it that aren't true to what they're telling people. Exactly. And a lot of people are all falling sorts into of different that, parties. that. Yeah. Trap. Lots yeah. of people are falling into that trap. Mm-hmm. Luckily, I don't think it matters. No, it it doesn't. It's going it's going to happen whether people want it or not. So you might as well get on board. Well, should we talk about that a little bit? Because that's come up a couple times in the show, and I've never been able to understand it or articulate both sides of that. So, I mean, do you want to talk about that, Darren? Because it is a sort of a, a, a thing. And watching her video was really good to see. You know the other side of it. Do, I mean, should we highlight a little bit about that other side while we can? Yeah, I mean, we can we can we can go through briefly. I mean, I'm not and I never claimed to be a tech expert. So when I went into the subject, I knew that I would have to do a lot of research to get it right. And even still, there there are arguments for both sides with this. Yeah, absolutely. There's great ones for keeping net neutrality, but it has nothing to do with with free speech like Google and Facebook and YouTube are trying to say it does. Uh, It has uh, nothing to do with like, this is going to become a cable package. You're going to have to pay for the internet, that sort of thing. These net neutrality rules that they're trying to disband are three years old. So it's not, they're painting this dystopian vision of what the internet will be once they remove these uh, laws. And it's just not accurate. No, because, I mean, I would even argue that the internet, internet's been worse in the last two or three years for censorship and all this other bullshit than it was before the net. And that's the other problem is a lot of people think net neutrality has just been around forever. And, you know, it's kind of like part of the Constitution, not that it's just some bullshit drafted up by bureaucrats like two and a half years ago. Yeah. And what it comes down to, and I kind of talk about that in my video, is that these large companies don't want to pay for, for all that excess um, bandwidth that they're using. And under net neutrality, that those costs get pushed onto the ISPs, like the internet service providers. Exactly. It comes down to money. And also the FCC is uh, creating rules where these um, companies have to be more transparent in what they're doing. So even let's say that the the worst happens where ISPs start um, blocking certain websites and censoring you, they have to be 100% transparent about why they're doing that. And most companies, knowing that they'll have to put out a statement of why they're doing that, know that they're going to get backlash for that. Yeah. So they probably won't, right? Otherwise, they're going to end up with huge issues. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. It's good to hear the other side of that. Yeah, no, absolutely. It's two-sided. Everything has two sides to it. Or more. I, I prefer, I mean, it's de- <laughs> it's deregulation at the end of the day. It's yeah, it, at the end of the day, it's it's a freer internet. And that's what people don't get. They think, oh, they're taking our freedom away. The government's putting all these regulations on us. It's the exact opposite of that. Well, I like how everyone's scared of monopoly. But if it's, my, they're, okay, they're okay with a fucking state monopoly. And that's what's going to end up happening if you just keep giving away these freedoms. Like, oh, well, okay, you don't have Walmart, but now you just have, you know, the state. The state. And you'll end up with something like what Canada does with censorship, right? <laughs> just uh, maybe we'll get into that in a bit. 
Yeah, we should definitely touch on that. Yeah. Do yeah. you have any more net neutrality stuff, Grab? Before? No, I don't, because I'm I'm still I yeah, I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. So I think she articulated it very well. And if you have something else to add, Darren, I mean that's no, that's about it. That's yeah. about the gist of it. Yeah. It's just here's the other thing about it is is people it shocks me. So I for the last few months I've been stepping out of this whole geopolitical mainstream media, even the deconstruction. Like I haven't been listening to the normal podcasts that I listen to. I haven't been watching stuff, paying attention. I mean, a little bit on the, on the edge, but not nearly like I was. So then when this net neutrality thing came up and the tinfoil hat guys brought it up and some other people brought it up, I couldn't believe how visceral this fight is from both sides. Like how people were getting so upset about anybody that was, you know, not, you know, parroting, what the media was saying about how this is taking away free speech. Like they're getting very, very upset and like without even looking at, or maybe they, maybe they did look at the other side, but is that shock you at all in, in this, this whole thing, especially with net neutrality, how polarized well, it's, it's gotten? Well, I think most people, it's a very complicated topic. And I think most people don't want to <laughs> look into, into it to that extent, right? Because most people won't understand it. So they take what other people are saying about it and they believe that is a fact. And also what, you know, these these big companies are saying about it, oh, it's going to kill your free speech. It's going it, to, it strikes an emotional chord with people. So they're not focusing on, on what's actually happening. They're focusing on what could happen, right? And they're leading people down this rabbit hole of hypotheticals that are just uh, just not realistic. So when you get any sort of emotional connection to this, like free speech, which obviously everybody wants, anyone who says that they're against uh, that. As long as it's not a look, Nazi. Look, looks, yeah, well, looks, yeah, like, but they, it, looks like they're crazy, right? Yeah. It's a Nazi. It's okay to be against free speech. Well, that's the Allegedly. thing is free, even free, free speech is under attack. I mean, people don't want, we don't free have speech free now. speech it's, in Canada. No, we don't. You don't, we no. don't. And, and, uh, I, I was talking to you about, earlier about how my roommate ordered a, a book from a right wing comedian and, uh, it got stopped at, stopped at customs and it's, no. and it's, yeah. And now, uh, they're saying that it was hate propaganda no. and they're going, they're going to burn it. No. They're going to burn this book. Burning books. Yes. No way. Yes, 2017 and we're burning books. From a right wing comedian? Come on. It, I it mean, was from it was from his name is Sam Hyde. So he's he's definitely um very, very edgy. He used to have his own TV show on uh, Adult Swim. So this was he was televised on TV. Uh and he absolutely is an obscene person. He always pushes the boundaries. He goes for shock value, right? So that that's him. And his book was called How to Bomb the US Government. And he named it that, so that way anyone um, Googling it will get a hit or a ding from the NSA, right? It was a joke. So that way when you order it through customs too, they see uh, the title, How to Bomb the US Government. They stop it, they open it up, they look at all this obscene stuff in there and it being Canada where we don't have those free speech laws. They call my roommate and say, uh, this book is disgusting. Do you know what's in here? And he's like, no, he's just a comedian I watched on TV. You know more about the book than I do. They say, well, we're going to send this to a lab and have it analyzed to see if it goes against any of the uh, hate speech policies. And they're checking it for, they've checked off that it's uh, obscenity and hate propaganda so far. And he'll hear back in 90 days uh, if it's illegal. And if it is, he, it's possible he could get charged. In either way, they're going to burn the book. Burning yeah, that's books. crazy. That blows me See, away. It's just and big, this, big, yeah, it's it's legal in it's legal in the states, right? This is a a, a comedian that's been on television. Well, it's you not going to be in legal the in the states for very long if they, you know, if things don't they don't smarten up. That's what sure. I mean. People, I get sort of feedback all the time about because I always talk about how far gone Canada is and how you know I'm heading to the states eventually. Oh, I, I'm in the same boat. This was so eye opening that this is ha like burning books. Right. Well, like, what are they afraid of? What well, are they afraid that we'll, you know, see? It wasn't that long ago that Monty Python was banned in certain countries. <laughs> right. So maybe it's just the way the world's going. But it feels like in Canada, we're 
um, going backwards. We are, with, yeah. In, in terms of free speech. Yeah, and it's the, it should be the opposite. I mean, it should be to the point where people can say what they want, and it's going to be up to us and, and the public and the so, you know, to rid, to start ridiculing that and to show how bad that is. I mean, it, 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 ta- it will take care of itself, I think, without a governing body to be like, that's not, you know, there will be like a natural ostracism that happens with people that are just hateful. Well, and I think they treat you like children. And, and I don't, whether you're far right or far left, there's going to be fundamental assholes on, on both sides, but they have that right to that opinion. As long as you're not hurting other people and there's no victim, I don't understand why anything is illegal. We shouldn't be trying people for thought like wrong thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then yet you have people that are actually propagating violence against uh, people that believe differently, you know, in the states. Absolutely. I mean, I mean how, how, you, how it's okay to punch somebody that believes something different. You know, all of a sudden violence is okay in the political spectrum. Like, that's where we are going backwards when, when it starts to get to that point. Well, and especially you look at, say, I think we're kind of we're talking about, like, Antifa right now is a good example of actually inciting violence. What they're doing is they're, they're talking about... Um, hurting people who have different ideologies in them and then they go out and actually do it that's actual incitement of violence right (laughs) that's That's like the one it's the one thing that isn't protected under the first amendment (laughs) is incitement of violence and they're getting away with it yeah yet yet anyone who's like right of marxism right now saying anything is censored banned uh policed it's it's totally um partisan here it's the same thing too. I mean, it's just so the irony to me is just too much that, you know, cause the number one argument is these big corporations are ruining the world cause they've got too much of a monopoly on everything. So let's be socialist and give the government a monopoly on fucking everything. Yeah. Including speech. That's right. Yeah. Seems like risky it seems to me. Weird. It seems like we're in a, I mean, we're going to end up there eventually. It seems fucking inevitable. They'll just it, fucking immigrate yeah. us to that. I don't know. Something's going to crack before we get to that, I feel like. Well, it kind of feels... Oregon, baby. <laughs> it, it almost feels like Justin Trudeau is, is almost like he's red-pilling people by being too politically correct. Like, he is taking Canada so far that now people... Like, even, like, people on the left, liberals, are starting to say, like, that's, what are you doing? That's kind right? of what I'm getting at, is it feels yeah. like it's cracking open. Like, And then, of course, Trump's, you know, that's happened on the, you know, down south as well, where... And, and, and for the world, I mean, a whole bunch of people are sort of waking up to to how biased the media is and how how bad it is. And it's not because Trump's calling out people for fake news. It's because people are realizing it on their own. People are going to independent media. And anytime you go to to somebody that's not paid for by the corporate sponsors and all, and they're doing their own research like yourself and like James Corbett and all these independent people that are, that are doing, the, you know, Alberta. this non-dogmatic news people are waking up to like how bad the mainstream really is so i feel like there is there is like the further they go and the further antifa justifies their violence that there will be more of a bounce back and there will be um people being red pilled no I, i totally agree i i think canada right now he's just trying so hard not to hurt people's feelings that he doesn't realize what he's doing to the country right it's people see canada kind of as that um, utopia in a way that we're you know it's a perfect country where everyone gets along and he's trying to just in in a way he's almost pretending like he's he's acting like he's too canadian in a way to actually get the job done now right because we're a country we don't run like a, a preschool <laughs> yeah you'd be lucky if we ran that good <laughs> yeah. not every like not it's it's a beautiful idea but we don't live in this kindergarten in the sky where everyone gets along and we share and there's no no issues right and now they're just saying well if you do have an issue you can go to jail right yeah that's right <laughs> and even though it's you know your tax dollars and everything else we don't care mm-hmm. because we've decided mm-hmm. it's a big problem it's a big problem in canada i mean people like, I think you said it, you hit the nail on the head when you said people, the rest of the world seems to have this, because I know this this fractured view of Canada is this sort of utopia like that. Other than the cold, everything's just fucking super. Because, I mean, I get a lot of surprise when I talk on the show about how much 
of a more of a free market it is in America than it is in Canada and how many, mm -hmm. how much more um, variety and competition and different stores and chains and diners and everything's different every place as opposed to the if same you think it's Canada. bad in America coming for a road trip down the trans Canada and tell me what you come across. <laughs> yeah. The same old shit. Every little town. I'll tell you now, buy like the gift cards at the first stop because you'll be able to like keep using those. Free Absolutely. Card. Yeah. And that's where we're headed. And I think I actually wanted to, to segue that into yeah. that, that, that bit of a sordid history or Holocaust totally. that, that Canadians have with the orphanages. Um, back when was that back in the thirties? It was at the end of World War II, uh, up until the 60s. And I think the thing with that is that everyone sees, again, Canada as this utopia. But Canada has some really dark secrets that they've been hiding for years that they don't want people to talk about. And one of that is, well, I mean, there's there's several examples. You have the, the native residential school system. You have the Japanese internment camps during World War II. And you have the Duplissy orphans, uh, which I, I believe we'll get more into in the show here. Uh, but all of this has been, I, I some of it's been brought to attention and there's been these apologies, but nobody really talks about this in the same way, say the, you know, Nazis and the Holocaust and how terrible that was, obviously. But Canada just kind of sweeps their own Canadian Holocaust under the rug. And those the the De Plessis orphans, they weren't even they weren't even natives for the most part, right? Because I think everyone kind of gets it and they're just a you know, we've you know, manifest destiny and whatever. Yeah, the Indians got a raw deal, but and I'm an Indian myself, but you know, here we are You're half, right? Half, yeah. And to a certain extent, you know, that is the case in a lot of ways, but in a lot of other ways it's you you still gotta fucking talk about it. Isn't there a history as well about the the natives coming up from the States before we had the before Canada and the U S actually separated or whatever. And then we ended up creating quite a bit of the Holocaust on the, on this side of the border when they all got forced up. I don't know. Do you know anything about that, Darren? I thought we talked about that once. No, I don't know. You don't know? No, but the, the Duplessis orphans were, there were, uh, Quebec children from Quebec. So, and many of them, I think it was only like less than 15% of them are true orphans. Most of them had at least one parent. But back then it was so Catholic that they said, if you were born like out of wedlock, you were a child of sin. Wow. So they would take your ch children away. They, well, they would come to you and tell you how bad it was that this happened and that they could just take your children away and kind of sweep it under the rug for you. So they're basically taking these children from these homes and putting them into these orphanages. And it was uh, they weren't given the proper like nutrition or care or education. So it was stunting their uh, development where they were seen as mentally unfit most of the time. And then when May, uh, the premier Duplissy, who is the premier of Quebec during that time, came in, he made it so that way you would get more money if you're instead of being an orphanage, if you were in like an asylum. So they changed all the statuses of these orphans to being insane. So that way they could get more money from the government. Well, is there any connection to the MK Ultra and all that starting in the universities in Montreal um, back in the, when was that, the 50s or the 60s? And I mean, they were using kids and experiments in that. I mean, there's got to be some sort of connection. Oh. There. There, there absolutely must be, because from, from the testimonies that I've read from that, they were doing all sorts of crazy sort of things. They were doing electroshock therapy. They were doing the ice baths. They were being uh, sexually abused, all the same sort of things that you would see with MK Ultra abuse. And, and they even talked about, there was one testimony that said that they saw Joseph, um, what's his name? Mangala. Mangala there. So... I mean, he, he obviously didn't, he lived until 1979, Joseph Mengele. So after he was with the Nazis in the tr concentration camp doing all those experiments on twins and everything, he, it sounds like he came over to Canada for a bit and other countries to help in their experiments. It's, it's disgusting. Old, so it really does Project have Paper Nazi Club, yeah. ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. How many and kids do you think we were talking Thousands, thousands, because they found an unmarked grave later when they were digging. They were going to make a parking lot and they started digging up these bones. Jesus. Uh, 
and this was right beside a, a what used to be a pig farm that these nuns owned. So there's speculation that these nuns were feeding these bodies of these children that died during these experiments to pigs to hide the evidence. And there was also they were also selling some of the bodies to medical students for ten dollars a body. Wow. Jeez, I, I, I was born in Montreal in 1970, so it's a good thing as a non-Catholic <laughs> fucking kid. So it's a good, in wedlock, though, I guess. So thank God for that. But, I mean, I was pretty close to... <laughs> you were pretty <laughs> close, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and the only reason, the only reason that I knew about this is when I was a nursing student, um, my first practicum was in a dementia um facility and my patient that I had had was a duplicy orphan and she was she had schizophrenia she had all types of um, conditions dementia obviously uh, bipolar disorder and she exhibited signs of PTSD and so I looked into her file and I saw a duplicy orphan and that's when I started oh to my dig God. and that's what kind of brought me into this rabbit hole of reality versus like what is being told to us and what is being hidden. And that's kind of why, where I started diving into conspiracies and what was really going on with the government. Like you just don't want to believe that that sort of thing happens, but there were, it was documented that this, these things a hundred percent happened to this woman. It was all in her medical history. That kind of leads me into what I was going to ask you about how you started off this journey, like what your red pill moment was. I mean, we talk about that, with a lot of our guests and ourselves on the show. So how long ago was that when you, when you sort of went down oh, that, that path? That would have been about five years ago. And it was around that time that I was, I mean, I, I would say when I was younger and in college, I was leaning more to the left, like most, most young women, especially. Um, and I was, I thought, you know, feminism was a great, <laughs> was a, was a great thing. And, and then I just started to see that it just became nasty on that side, right? Mm -hmm. And if you didn't believe everything that they believed, you would become attacked. And I, I have always thought for myself. And when things started to change like that, I just I couldn't agree with with that label anymore, and I couldn't agree with what was happening. And then I started to go down again. That I saw the Duplicy orphan thing, and I was just disgusted by society, uh, and that really kind of opened up my eyes to everything else that was going on. And when P like Pizzagate hit, it was such a reminder of that. Yeah. And yeah. it was automatically like, of course, like, of course this can happen. Cause I know for a fact that it has in the past. Right. So I, people just, they don't want to believe those things, but it doesn't mean that they're not happening or they're not true. Yeah. I mean, even myself, that was the first, your YouTube video was the first I'd sort of heard of it. So how many bodies did they find in that grave? Oh, I'd have to look, but I made a video about it. It was one of my, it was like my second video. Cause that was one that I really wanted to get out there. It was thousands though, uh, as far as I remember. And that was, it was even in the newspaper that they found thousands of bones there. And, um, and it was construction workers that found it and they tried to play the Canadian government, tried to play it off as if it were animal bones, but there were, they found fingers, right? Animals don't have fingers. Opposable sounds. Yeah. So that was the start of your, so that was kind of the genesis of your, of your, the truth factory, right? So you, that was your second video. Um, is that how you've sort of started off that whole channel? You're like, I want to get this out to people and then like, I might as well do it on YouTube kind of thing. Well, actually it was something I, it's kind of sounds kind of funny. I mean, I, w I was sitting on that story f for quite a while. I knew that I wanted people to know about it. Um, but before that I was actually a, a web comic artist. And, and before that I had had my own YouTube channel for years where I just did uh, kind of cringy vlogs and comedy skits and things like that, that are um, kind of hidden from the world now because it's pretty bad. And I wanted to do another project. It was kind of going through a personal tragedy and I, I wanted to distract myself. So I, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to put a couple stories out there. I'm going to, you know, pass that around to a few friends. I didn't think anything of it. I really didn't. I thought the kind of the heyday of YouTube was over. I didn't think anyone would care or watch my videos. Mm -hmm. um, but I was just doing it as kind of a hobby, uh, a distraction and something that I knew that I wanted, I wanted more people to know about because if I didn't know about it before I had that patient, I'm sure most Canadians don't. So, so, 
Yeah, and it was, and then it was the week after that the Seth Rich thing happened that I just got super enthralled in. A hundred percent, I did like a thousand videos on that. So, and that's that's kind of where I'm like, no, I I love this. I want to do this, and that was it. So, were you pretty surprised at how like talk about the, you know, how it started to to build and how you, I mean, how did you even end up getting traction so quickly? Well, I. I mean, I was gaining tr- uh, traction a little bit faster than I expected. You know, even when I got to 100 subscribers, like that was exciting for me because I'm like, whoa, 100 people are actually like what I'm doing. And then I CNN blackmail happened. If you remember that, where that Redditor posted yep. a GIF and Trump retweeted it and CNN blackmailed them. I made a video, a funny video. And that's where I got, I think, 10,000 subscribers almost overnight. And I was getting about another a thousand subscribers every day after that for a while. And that was just insane. I, you know, it's just I, not something you, you expect to happen. And even now that it does, it doesn't seem real. Like I, I don't, I definitely don't think of myself as, as a super popular uh, YouTuber or anything, but it's, it's kind of exciting that people care enough to watch my videos and support me. I, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I mean, we, we started this not really thinking that, uh, that we'd get any, any traction either or any listenership. We wanted to do it for the sake of doing it and talking to interesting people like yourself and all that. And I, so I, I understand that. And it, and it is weird when, and it's a good feeling when you realize that, okay, like people want to want to hear this and we want to talk about things openly and, you know, and it's uh yeah, it's refreshing. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I also like, being anonymous um, because I have this secret, it's almost like I have a secret life <laughs> online. So nobody, barely anyone in my personal life knows what I actually do in my spare time, which is being a, a talking cat on the internet, which is maybe a little hard to describe to people. Um, but I like it. It's kind of like being, I don't want to say like a superhero, but you kind of have that secret identity on the side. It's pretty interesting. Is that how you explain it to people when they ask? Do you say, like, I'm a cat that talks on the internet? <laughs> if I have to, I'm just like, I just say I do political videos with a comedic twist. Um, and I usually say I'm, I'm, it's right wing. And they'll say, oh, do you like Trump? And I say, well, yeah, it's pro-Trump. <laughs> and usually that's where they'll either be like, OK, I'm for it or I'm against it. There's no one who's in the middle with Trump, really. It's either you either like him or you hate him. I right? It's polarizing. I don't know. I mean, I I don't even get the sense that you are pro-Trump. I mean, I, I feel like you're just pro, pro-progress pro prog- or something or pro-truth. Like, it's a truth Pro-truth. But I mean, you know, it's... I, Oh, where was I going with that? I mean, I feel like the people, and I, I you know, I'm probably going to piss off a bunch of people here or whatever, but I feel like people that lean right or they're on the right are a little bit less dogmatic about their views and a little bit more like when I hear you talk about it, you'll talk about the bad stuff from the right as well. Just like all the, most of the independent news that I listen to will criticize the right and they'll hold Trump's feet to the fire a little bit more than, than anybody on, on, it seems like on the left seems very, very pigeonholed into their biases. And they're like that, you know, they just, it's just emotional based on a bunch of bullshit. It seems, I don't know. Well, I, I think I, I call, I call out bullshit when I see it. I don't think, obviously I don't think Trump is perfect in any way. I kind of like that. He's what I like about him is that he seems real in the way that he doesn't he doesn't capitulate to political correctness, exactly. which is what mainstream media wants. He may be the first president since JFK that wasn't supposed to win sort of thing. Like Hillary Clinton didn't even have um, a speech prepared for if she lost. So it kind of tells you that <laughs> <laughs> like there were forces at work for her to win. And the fact that she didn't was a big surprise to a lot of people. And that's what I like. I like kind of that that laughing in the face of of that the, shadow the government establishment. Sort of yeah, thing. The, yeah, the establishment. Absolutely. And it does feel like there is a there is a, a a war going on at the in the shadow governments. I mean, there's obviously you know support for Trump at some higher levels, but I agree with you. It feels like this wasn't supposed to happen. And and you know, a lot of people that are deeper into the conspiracies will say, "Oh, it's all part of the." the distraction and it's all part of the show and you know, he's in there and then, you know, they'll talk about all the connections to his uncle and the FBI and the, 
Tesla files and all this other, all this other stuff. But I still feel like it, it wasn't meant to happen and that it is a slap across the face of the establishment mm-hmm. and, and they don't know what to do. They don't know what to do. I feel like they're in, um, the mo like recovery. Like, like, well, they're in fucking f- fight or flight. It seems. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know any other president who has attacked this viciously by the mainstream media. Like, sure, they went after Bush, but not the way that they're going after Trump. And and there's definitely media connections to the CIA. And we know that even from the JFK files, right, where they talk about there being 40 agents working potentially yeah. for the CIA to hide things about the JFK cover up and everything. Yeah. I. Uh, you know, you look at Anderson Cooper, his background, he interned for the CIA and then just magically becomes a journalist with no formal training. It's it's a little suspicious. And so whenever I see the mainstream media pushing something hard, I always look at the reasoning why and what the opposite side to that is. And that's usually where you find the truth, unfortunately. Yep. <laughs> I mean, even the CIA had more than 40. I mean, that was just the JFK stuff. And they had 400, I think, with that project. Uh, What was the project they had there where they're influencing all the papers and the media? Mockingbird? Mockingbird, yeah. 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 So what's it like for you now? Because, I mean, we've been doing this for four and a half years now. And we were both interested in some of these topics beforehand. But I feel like I go through these levels of, like almost different levels down the rabbit hole, you know, and sometimes it takes me like years to wake up to certain things or months to wake up or sometimes something clicks right away. But the more I, the more we do this and that's kind of why I separated away from the the mainstream sort of stuff over the last few months is it just felt like it was getting just ridiculous, all the back and forth and accusatory stuff, this and that, and there's all the lies and then nothing would end up happening. And it just felt like, oh my God. So, and then I started, you know, you start getting into the, the sort of the magical metaphysics of the conspiracies and it just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. And you realize that so much of it is just a distraction and a sham and that the whole you know, our, our history is full of lies. I mean, how does it feel for you? Like, or have you been going down deeper into the rabbit holes and like, where are you going to go in the next little while? I mean, I have a whole bunch of questions around that just yeah. from my own experience. Absolutely. Well, I think there's definitely some things that you stumble upon and you're like, how, like, why do people not know about this exactly. or how can they, how can they do this? And you feel like disgusted and it's evidence based, that- you know? Yeah, that is just it's just like Pete like and, and then I'm just a cat on the Internet, which sometimes I feel like is to my detriment, too, because I do want people I do have videos that are serious that need to be taken seriously. And maybe I'm kind of uh, just the right blend of entertainment and news. So that works. Definitely. But- like it, it does get dark at times. I know like the Seth Rich murder for me, like that was a big eye opener into what like Hillary Clinton is capable of because I without a doubt believe that he was murdered for what he knew. Um, and even the, the Hillary Clinton kill list, her bodyguard kill list. It's it's just insane that these people can get away with corruption time and time again. And it, it just shows you who is really in charge of the world. There's so many crooked cops. There's so many crooked judge, judges, so many crooked politicians. And things won't get better until we get rid of that. And I mean, I I, I don't trust Trump 100% because I don't trust anyone 100% with that much power. But there is hope that perhaps something will change and these people will will pay for what they've done or at least get caught on some sort of technicality to get them out of there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What about what about the deeper aspect of it? So like the cops, politicians, all that kind of stuff. But what about the, you know, the more like the secret society part, the Illuminati? I mean, oh, have you been going yeah. down that at all? Okay. Because it's hard not to then start going down there. I mean, there's the Tavistock well, and the Hollywood influence and the, the cultural social engineering. I mean, it's just, fuck, it goes so fucking deep. Well, it's kind of interesting. My father is actually, I, I found out like later in life that my father was actually part of a, uh, what are they called? Freemason? Not, it wasn't, 
it wasn't the Freemasons. It was the Rastacrucians. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they're like a kind of like a split off from the Freemasons way back in the day where the Freemasons were like kind of the people in trades where the Rastacrucians were, you know, your doctors and your scientists. And so he, he was a Rastacrucian and just some of the things, you know, I was interested in that when I found out and that kind of got me a little bit interested in secret societies. I definitely believe like there's like a build, Bilderberg groups meet up and do all sorts of weird things, uh, spirit cooking, like all of that is real. I 100 percent believe that that there is some weird satanic shit going on. Mm-hmm. I, I don't know how how deep that that goes, though. Yeah, Nobody yeah. really does. No, right. Exactly. And in, until I until I get more evidence on that, a lot of it's speculation. Besides of what you actually read in John Podesta's emails, like when he's talking about spirit cooking, and there's like he uses code words like pizza maps and dominoes. Uh, I, I definitely believe that there's a, a, some kind of child trafficking ring. I think that's kind of evidence when you just piece together what they're doing in Haiti with those emails. Something is going on that they don't want people to know. Yep. Oh, and, and, and I, well, and, yeah. and, uh, the, what's his name that's been busted that the guy flies back and forth at, uh, Epstein. And then there's the, yeah. you know, in the UK, all those high level people have been busted. I mean, it's, it is prevalent at the higher levels. So, I mean, definitely something's going on and it feels like it is cracking open a little bit. There seems to be like hundreds of arrests and people get it. And that, and now what I also wanted to ask you about is how this ties into the whole, everybody, uh, getting busted for all the sexual assault and all that, all Hollywood and all these people. Like, what's your opinion on that? Has that drawn you into um, maybe doing some videos on that? Well, I, I haven't done one on that and I've been holding off. I, I do have opinions on it. Um, but I've always thought that those things should be handled on a case by case basis. And I think it gets dangerous when we lump every case together yep. and the reason why is now that you have this swarm of allegations coming out probably most of it true this is where false allegations can come in and everyone's going to believe it because we're in witch hunt mode yeah so that's that's where it gets kind of tricky so i think everything needs to be seen on a case-by-case basis and we need to look at the evidence behind that right yeah and, and also also it could be it. just to desensitize us as well i mean the more and more things that come out, even if they are false. I mean, there no, could true, be people true. that are scapegoats or, or, um, you know, used in a false way just to, just to yeah. add to the plethora of, of cases. That, and it's just desensitizing everybody, just like they're trying to desensitize, um, you know, pedophilia and stuff. Yeah, with, with certain um, absolutely. And was I surprised when these allegations in Hollywood came out? No, absolutely not. You, I think you just kind of assume that, Hollywood is a cesspool for perverts and anyone in, in, it seems like a lot of people in power have just, they just think that they can, can do whatever they want and get away with it. Um, but again, it, it's, it's a case by case basis there. And I don't want to, you don't want to throw every man under the bus because then it becomes about that, about how all men are, are disgusting perverts. And that's not fair at all. So what would your video, are you, are you thinking about doing like an overarching kind of video on that sort of on that vein? You know, I, I haven't, I haven't decided yet when it first, when Weinstein first came out, I was going to do one that kind of took a different approach to it. It wasn't going to be victim blaming or anything like that, but it was going to be like, well, are you surprised that these women, uh, what's the difference between say Gwyneth Paltrow and any other very attractive actress in Hollywood? is that she slept with Weinstein, right? Or, or whatever, or she played that she liked him. They're, they're, they know what they're doing for the most part, besides the times that they're just, you know, obviously uncomfortable. But if they're consensually allowing him to do these things to you, you can't later come out and say, say something about unless you want to give up all your money in your movie roles sort of thing. I mean, obviously it's disgusting. Obviously you shouldn't be put into those situations, but it seemed like a lot of these people knew what they were getting into and they didn't say anything about it. And they pretended to be his best friend for years and years and years because they were getting the movie roles. Yeah. 
I do feel like I do feel like it was it it could be a case as well as more and more people do feel more comfortable about coming out and there is a there is a, a comfort in numbers or a safety in numbers in this case where some of it is probably just people going, Okay, like I'm ready to share now because it's you know, the spotlight's gonna be shared between me and, you know, a hundred other people. No, I, I can see that point too. Absolutely. I just I I feel like Oh, where I like your point though. I mean, I do like your, yeah. your, your, your analysis on that in that way where it shouldn't surprise us as well. That is it's, it still lining up with the streaming services theory? What's, still, what's that? that? That it was attack on like Amazon oh. and Netflix and house of cards. And a lot of the people were, were on streaming services or had contracts with streaming services. Or you, you think to, it was like a publicity thing? Like these people who are coming well, out with allegations are kind like of getting a, few a, of a bump? For sure. Or, or not getting a bump. The opposite. Oh, like they're House pushing of Cards had to it. fucking drop Spacey now. So they're just doing oh, all Netflix. more season. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I mean, if you want to bring someone down in power, all you have to do is say that they're a rapist. Or a child predator like Spacey. That's if you want to bring Clinton. someone down, that's all you have to say. You've ruined their career. Yeah, and but- it doesn't matter if it's true. And that's that's another point I want to get at. Like, again, it needs to be a case-by-case thing. Obviously, there are pedophiles out there, and a lot of them are probably in positions of power like politics and uh, Hollywood. But again, if you want to ruin someone's career or you have your own political agenda or you're making money, all you have to do is is say those words and it's done. Like you can't go back from that or it's very hard to. That's right. Yeah, that's the I mean, that's the weird thing is, you know, you can ruin all these other people's careers because the left has control over the media in a lot of ways where which I don't know, then that seems weird as well, because. A lot of these people are on the left yet, you yeah, know, like Bill, the, the Bill Clinton, the Bill Clinton and, and all these other people that are, that are legitimately being accused. It just seems like they just, nothing happens and they just, just get, get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think everyone knows Bill Clinton's a rapist, um, but nothing, nothing's been done about it. Huh. It's because they know that they know the right people, right? They own the right people, I should say. So what's your plan? Like, where are you going to, do you have any ideas uh, coming up? Do you just kind of wing it and go with what your gut says you need to talk about? Or how, how does that process work? Um, <laughs> well, I see if there's any news stories that catch my attention, uh, typically. And if they don't, I just kind of try to put a, a, a funny spin on things. So I'm actually going to go and probably my next video will be about um, political correctness um, going too far or even even just um, like virtue signaling in the media and perhaps why to show most of my, most of my viewers are American. So to talk about what's happening in Canada and to say, if you don't stop what's happening now and you just continue to capitulate to the far left, this is what could happen to your country sort of thing by, by showing actual newspapers that are happening in Canada. I actually have a question for you. Cause you said you were half native. What do you, have you heard about, um, Canada or Calgary perhaps changing their name. <laughs> and what do you I, I feel about hear, that? I did hear about that. What was it again? Stony Baloney. I wish, <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I could pronounce it. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't think it's we like change the it's name. like w- Wichipa Oyed, and it means Elbow City. I think is what it translates to. I think it's a, I think it's almost like a troll. Like I think they're just like how the white people can't pronounce this. This is going to be funny, and they're so like Trudeau is so politically correct now that they're probably going to do it, and it's just a big joke. But that would be pretty funny, actually. I would I would I would like to see it happen just for that reason. But I don't no, I don't want to change the name of the city. I got all my flame shirts and a C on them. <laughs> well, a, I not a w. And, and like then they'd have to do change like yeah all the all the sports teams to this right I'm, it, Wait, you I know it's I just we're past down. that they already fucked everything up for the indians you know we're past that you, you know you can't change in the name of the <laughs> cut, city cut your losses and move on yeah right? changing the name of the city isn't fucking helping and it's kind of like 
What about naming all these highways after, like that's Stony right. Trail a, and that's Crowfoot? Little, that's, and, little, that's, little, that's name a highway, not a city. Yeah, but, they want to call it Witchy Spa Oy, Oydade. Unless it's I'm a new city, right and then all. they can name it whatever they want. But um, I don't know. It's part of this whole political correct nonsense that includes this anti cultural appropriation shit, which I think is bullshit as well. I think we should be appropriating culture wherever we like, and it should be treated as a tribute and more yeah. more of a tribute than anything else. I mean, if people don't start attribute, attributing Native American culture now and Indian culture now, then it's just not going to be around in a thousand years. A thousand, no maybe five hundred. Yeah, I agree with you. And you, when you, whenever somebody points out, well, what about people who appropriate white or like European culture? I suppose we're the only like people who aren't allowed to have their own culture. <laughs> exactly. Like they say, no, you can't have that because you have privilege or, or whatever. There's always well, some culture, excuse privilege. to it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I guess so. <laughs> but like even, even now I think the Edmonton Eskimos who go back to Alberta, they want them to change their name. Did you, did you hear yeah, about I've that? Yeah, I've seen that too. And I've seen a bunch of natives were saying, no, just leave, just leave it. Yeah, I think it's more so white people that care more than oh, anyone yeah, else. Yeah, they're appropriating our rage. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was like that. I made a video about um, was it Apple? Apple had hired a diversity. Oh, that chief. was a great one. I listened. I, yeah. I listened to that video. It was very good. Yeah, and she's a black woman. And she said, well, white people can be a part of diversity, too, because they have different backgrounds and they're going to have different experiences and they're going to bring something to the different to the table. And then they made her apologize and they have made her step down. And now they're replacing her with a white woman. And it it's so funny. It's just white people who hate who hate the fact that they think that they have privilege or whichever they hate white guilt. So they just do anything that they can to capitulate to other people's uh, needs, even if they don't want it. They right? like, they like white guilt. You mean probably. Well, yeah, I guess so. Or they like to virtue signal. I'm not yeah, racist. Yeah, yeah. I'm not racist. So we're going to rename the city to something nobody could pronounce. Yeah, like the people at Apple, you, you mentioned there's a bunch of older white guys running Apple that are hiring a black woman to be the the uh, diversity person. And mm -hmm. they're, they're all filled with all this white guilt. And then she ends up not being racist and actually forced some white men diversity. And then it all goes backwards. Like, it all goes to hell. It's unbelievable. It's, it's clown it's okay world. It's, oh. it's a what world? It's a clown world that oh, we live in. It seems <laughs> yes, to be turned crazy. on its head right now. Like I honestly can't believe it some days. I'm just and like, wow. So here's the thing. It's it's part of this is engineered, right? Now now I haven't gone down the full rabbit hole, but I've listened to some people talk about it. And I mean, look at Soros' funding, eighteen billion into these organizations, right? He is the cause mm -hmm. of a lot of that. So how much of it it's hard for me to reconcile it just in my head. Society. How much of this is engineered? compared to how much of it is just some sort of weird natural evolution. Like I, I feel like all it takes is a kick in the ass to, to set us down this path. And then people end up going backwards. Like we're talking about. Wonderful. Well, there, society there, as a podcast. <laughs> yeah. We could fill that role. There's a, there's a statistic out there. I can't remember it exactly, but something like you only need 15% of the population to be on board with something and it can become mainstream. Right. So you only need a small. And I feel like that's happening with the the far left. I find like most liberals are not not that far left, but it's the far left that's trying to change uh, our how our society views things and how uh, we talk. And it only takes uh, it only takes the media to start presenting that this is appropriate. This is right for everyone to get on board, unfortunately, besides the few people like myself who push against it. And that's just, it's, it's just, that's how society works, right? We don't want to be the odd men out. We want to, we want to be, we want to feel like we're on the right side of history. I think they push this. So now, so now everyone has to agree that there's like 700 genders and that science is just a social construct. Gender like, is, a, is fluid. So you can't you, put a fixed number on it. It's like, uh, it's just a fluid, man. <laughs> it's like a fluid. <laughs> It's, it's not like a fluid. They say it's fluid, so you can change your genders if you want, you know your gender if you want, right? That's that's what they mean by that. I think. I mean, and I, I mean, I I think in your head you can you can say I feel like this gender, 
but that biologically doesn't change what what you are. Unless you have enough hormones, I guess, then replacement. But even even you still, your money your DNA you're covered in Canada, you're good. We'll your DNA at that level is still the same, and I mean that's an interesting topic, and I I I definitely understand that trans people don't decide what they feel right but there's also people out there now we're getting it's getting interesting because people are talking about being transracial uh people feel like they identify as animals now and so it's where do you draw the line yeah or do you or do you don't draw the line man anything goes i I was listening to a podcast a couple years ago where a chick married a bridge and she made love to it (laughs) come on but is that consensual <laughs> if the Ooh, bridge can't say, Whoa, a, imagine it that rain? all of a sudden we come up with some spray that makes things sentient and the bridge is like i'm present charges <laughs> was it was it a soft bridge or a hard bridge <laughs> so <laughs> so the and then the other thing is i mean there's chemicals that chemicals that are in our food and our water and stuff that do have an influence on our yeah i, I, I made it I don't know if you saw my video on that, but I made a video on, yeah, it's really interesting. This is one that I kind of discovered on my own. I'm sure like it existed other places, but this is one I dived down the rabbit hole with. And it was from an Alex Jones quote, actually. And it was kind of a, sorry, it was going to be a funny video at first because it was one where he says, there's chemicals in the water that are turning, turning the freaking frogs gay. Maybe you've heard that. We're very familiar with that quote. So that that made me laugh quite a bit, but I'm like, you know what? Let's let's see what's behind this. So I look into <laughs> it, and there is an actual study with an African. I don't know if you're aware of this of an yeah, African cane yeah, yeah. frogs that have uh, become hermaphroditic due to atrazine, which yeah. is a, a herbicide, which is the number I think the second largest chemical found in like Roundup spray yeah. that Monsanto uses. And so I, I'm like, okay, well, this is really interesting. So I started diving deeper into it, and I found out that there were these links to to this happening in in um, fish, and that less male fish were being born. And I'm like, well, I mean, if it's in the water, is this? Are we drinking this? Right? Is yes, this getting are. into our taxes? And yes, you are. It's all and over even, the place. Not even only that, if you look, there's so much yeah. shit in the water. I was because I just actually went to a Berkey filter <laughs> because it was uh, <laughs> because you, you, you can't didn't... get the fucking you can't get there's there's so much estrogen and shit in the water from women's pee from birth control because it all just comes back in and all the cleaners and everything so i was on the plastic bottles forever and then it turns out no one in canada's bpa free fucking plastic (laughs) drinking jugs so all the drinking jugs in fucking alberta are fucking bpa so all your culligan bottles any bottle you have on a water cooler and I would argue just probably, for people that don't know what is that's that in Alberta, that's probably fucking mostly across. That means like that, they're, that, 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 that you can leach. Like if you leave it in the sun or whatever, you're leaching those chemicals into your water. Is yeah, that what it means? Like it's not BPA plastics. free. It's that. Yeah. Well, I even, I have a friend who's a biochemist and I said, well, do you know about atrazine? Cause to me again, this was like, whoa, what is happening? <laughs> and he's like, oh yeah, it messes with your hormones. I'm, well, like, I'm okay, so well, glad you talked about that. Water? Yeah, I'm so glad you addressed that because, I mean, that's one of these topics that, you know, we've kind of wanted to get into as well. So, so what was the reaction then? So you're, here's, here's a biochemist saying, yeah, it's, uh, it affects your hormones. And you're like, well, why isn't this being talked about? Well, well, exactly. Well, and I mean, I don't think he really had a response to that, but obviously if it's, if you're spraying crops with it, it comes into, it's, it's run off into the water. I even found a website that showed how much atrazine was being like all the different chemical breakdowns for, for the rivers and the lakes where you're, you're close to. And where I live, there's a moderate amount of atrazine found in the water. I've even contacted my like uh, municipal uh, water treatment facilities. And I asked, you know, is this being filtered out? What, you know, if I don't want this in my water, if I want fluoride, whatever, what can I do? And they said, well, basically you need to go get a reverse osmosis filter on your tap to do that. So unknowingly, a lot of people are consuming this water and there's been a uh, dramatic drops in male fertility and female fertility in the last even 20 years, dropping every decade. Um, 
it, it's and I, I made a full video on this with the, the exact numbers for the fertility for the sperm count. And it seems like this is only happening in like first world countries, probably oh, yeah. countries where they're doing where they have herbicides. Right. And vaccines and all these other great things that <laughs> give us like the number fucking 31, 32, 33 rank and in the infant mortality rate. Not only that, if you look at the charts on how much infant mortality has increased and improved around the world in the last fucking 50 years, and then you look at the first world quotations, it's pathetic. It's backwards. Yeah. Our increase rate is maybe fucking, it's, it's got twice as good, while the rest of the world has got 10, you know, or, 20 10 or 20 times as good. And at this point, it looks like we're about to start rolling back. Yeah. Well, they are in Europe. In Europe, there is a negative um, birth to death ratio right now. And that has to do, I, I strongly, and I talk about this like in, even in my atrazine video, I think that strongly has to do with that mass uh, immigration that they're pushing through. They say, okay, we're not getting as much, we don't have as much births in here. So instead of trying to figure that out, let's mass import um um, young men <laughs> to to our to our workplace to start making babies and to start um, filling up the workforce and paying taxes. So it's a replace it's a population replacement in what I what I believe because even in, even in Canada our population is not replacing itself as fast as it did when when we had baby boomers right and this is could collapse a government if you don't have enough people or so they say. Well, and that's such a could use some collapse. And well, that's the thing. And I mean, that's such a, (laughs) well, that's the encouraging thing about living in a small country like Canada, because when I sit around and have serious political discussions with some of my friends and you look at, you know, a province like Alberta where there's only three or 4 million people. And it's like, if you really want to do something and you're serious about it, you still got a chance. I mean, if you start early enough and get enough people interested in today's world with the internet and everything else and get some boots on the ground, um, what for know, what like political action local oh, politics I, yeah, yeah but look what are you gonna do with local politics though i mean Just i don't start. know i don't know i'm not so Better optimistic about NDP. that yeah but you know you're you don't know till you try and you know i'll tell you it's probably more of a difference than you're making watching football maybe yeah. not as much of a difference as you're doing making a podcast or youtube videos but you're still, it's something, you know, we can't all make podcasts. So no, I know. It's just, it's just, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's weird uh, with the population thing. I like, say you got to do it. If you have a chance, you should fucking, you should be, you should be fucking active politically. If I, you get a chance in your lifetime, it's, cause it's the same argument as people don't vote. If you don't fucking vote, then don't bitch. Even if you don't believe in the system. Well, it, that vote is a, is a vote. No, no vote is a vote though. Is it? Yeah. I think well, so. no, isn't no vote. Isn't the president I, of the United States right now. I think if you, I think if you want to do it, an F you, I mean, I've always voted independent. I'm a bit of a contrarian. This might be the first year that I, I don't, or, or the next election, sorry okay. for Alberta might be the first. Yeah. <laughs> because I feel like, I, I think I've changed now where I actually see maybe my vote makes a difference and maybe, and maybe that's just hope before I was a little bit more disgruntled and it was kind of like an F you to the man. I'm just going to vote independent. Screw you. I'm going to vote for the funniest <laughs> candidate here kind of thing. Um, I agree. Now, this is an important election yeah. coming up. Yeah. And I used to vote. I used to vote for the, what was it? The pirate party for Alberta, um, which was the internet party. And then I actually talked to like the, the head of the pirate party in one of my videos. And now I'm not so sure I would vote for him again, which sounds bad um, because he was a very nice person, but they were, they've just swung so liberal now that I don't, I, I can't tell them apart from NDP or, or liberal. Now it would be nice if there was kind of an independent uh, platform that I could get behind. That was more of a, like a right wing libertarian that was just for free speech and those things that I actually <laughs> care about, but that's not, there's just, that doesn't exist. Well, we'll and reconvene I, in like I, 10 years and we'll start like an internet well, political party. I would, you know, and I, I told, I did tell my subscribers, I get to a million subscribers, I'll, I'll start a political party. Well, I'm Jesus. still, I mean, I'm a registered libertarian myself and I've, I've, I mean, I'm, I plan on running for some sort of office when my kids are, once my kids leave, 
I'm still relatively young. When my kids leave, I'll still be relatively young, and I'll have some time. And I plan on taking. You a, can make mushrooms legal. Taking a run at something. I don't know. Well, we could. Do we could do a. We could make our own political party. We could each have a riding. We could do it like a conspiracy party, like the alien party. Like <laughs> you get us. In you get now. us into <laughs> office. We'll get into government. We'll find the documents and we'll release them to the public. We'll be oh, like the fuck. WikiLeaks political party where That's we just release everything. There you go. I bet we'd win. I bet we'd win because people are just curious, right? And they're oh, just so yeah. sick of all the bullshit. They're like, exactly. yeah, whatever. Exactly. Let's do it. <laughs> well, yeah, I've got, I've got actually, you know, we should talk offline sometime because I've got what I consider like a path to success over, like it's like oh a 15 God. year path to political success. <laughs> And it involves technology and a whole bunch of things and a lot of along pot. the way. But I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm no, I'll quit when I'm running. I'll quit smoking. You'll quit smoking. Get on the edibles. That can be your chem, like that can be like your slogan. I'm quitting for the yeah, people. But, well, you just got to be a better pothead than smoking. fucking Gary Johnson. You know, don't be stoned when you're doing a fucking national interview, bro. What's in Aleppo? <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> But anyway, I, the reason I brought that up is because I'm a registered libertarian and I'm not going to vote libertarian in the next election. What do you, can I ask what you're going to vote or is it secret? No, you I can vote conservative because that seems to be what every, yeah. that seems to be like a, if, if everyone's uniting on that right now just to get yeah. the NDP out and I'm willing to do that myself. It's kind of funny because I cannot Alberta, risk four more years of this bullshit. Yeah. I think it's funny in Alberta, we call it Unite the Right, right? Where they're united the Wild Rose Party with the Conservative Party. Whereas in the States, Unite the Right was like a bunch like of a Nazis. Nazi. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so when you the say, thing. like, I'm for Unite the Right in Alberta, it means something totally different. That's I've been called a Nazi several times in the last year, Online. which fucking blows me away. Yeah. No one's calling me a Nazi to my but face. It's... I'm brown. Well, no, online, I said, like on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's unbelievable to me. Just for suggesting that. You know, free speech matters in every direction. Otherwise, next time it's going to be you. And you're a fucking Nazi. Yeah, <laughs> well, but I mean, that's, that's the that's problem. That's the funny is... thing about it. It's like Nazis burn books, right? Nazis were destroying free speech. Kind of like what the Canadian government is currently doing to my roommate's book, right? Like, yeah. like, like say Twitter's someone is a Nazi that has nothing fucking... to do with like the 1937 German Reich. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like that was a Nazi. No, like but the, someone... The... Someone who was involved with the German army in the 1930s, that's a Nazi. Anyone else is just someone you disagree with. And you're just looking for a pejorative to call them so that way you don't have to have a rational argument. That's all it is. Exactly. And the problem is, is that so many people, even people, they didn't see through that whole thing. Like, yeah, they, they unite the right in the States and there's a few Nazis there. There's a few. There's also... Just some people on the right. Some very fine people. There's some fucking independent. There's probably libertarians there. There's a bunch of very fine people there. There was. And the fucking left has been propagating the violence before that. And then so and then, then yeah, they just tar that whole right side with a few Nazis. Like when have the Nazis really been an issue in the States or white supremacy for that example? Of course they exist. They exist in a small pockets, small pockets somewhere. They're really not an issue. They haven't been, I don't think, for decades. And it's just, I, I think it's just I cover a, that in a video too. And I totally agree with you. It's like, of course, of course, disgusting people exist in any group, right? But if that's like your scapegoat that you're going towards that Nazis are everywhere. Well, I mean, you can call anyone a Nazi. That doesn't make them a Nazi, right? Like I've been called a, a white a white supremacist. And it's like, <laughs> when have I ever said that? What, like they just, they just put these labels on you. So that way they don't have to d come up with a rational argument to defend uh, against your points. Exactly. Cause they don't have one. They're like, okay, well I disagree with you because you're a white supremacist or you're a Nazi. It's just, it's just an easy way to say that because they know that nobody wants to be called that. And that's like one of the worst things that you could be called. Motherfuckers. Yeah. Well, I think that's well. Yeah. Well I do. Said. Well, I do have a question on the atrazine too, because when you're doing all that research, did you end up? Did you end up doing more research into more um, of the studies of of what it actually does to people? Like even your biochemist knew. So did you go down that path where not only is it in all our water, but yeah. I mean, what's it like? You know, it's. Well, I mean, I I have a, a little bit of a medical background myself. I mean, I'm definitely not an endocrinologist, but I find all that stuff fascinating. I believe it is an androgen blocker because I remember it worked similar to a medication. I, I My background's in a bit like dermatology. Um, it works like a androgen blocker that we use in dermatology to help 
women who have acne who have excess testosterone. It's also the same drug that's used uh, that turns that um, transgenders use when they're going from male to female. So that's so it's effectively they work the same way. So atrazine blocks your androgen or your testosterone hormone, so that way you're you you just have your your estrogen. So that way it it feminizes you over time, right? And it would drop that's your uh, fertility. Yeah. And no, so and I mean- like. And women who, who women take estrogen as a birth control too, right? So we don't want that much estrogen either in women. So it's that's why they're saying like fertility rates in women and men are dropping. Sperm count rates are dropping in men because basically just like soy has phytoestrogens. So you have phytoestrogens and now you have something also blocking your testosterone at the same time. Like, of course, you're going to have issues with your endocrine system. Yeah, that's my my wife's doing a cleanse right now to clean out all that in her. What I forget the other one she's talking about. Ugh, I can't think of it. But you know what? I've been going along for. I'm not as strict as she is. I'm, I'm but I'm along for the ride for all the dinners and everything like that. And I've cut out a couple of things, and I haven't taken an allergy pill in like a week. Wow! And you've lost a bit of weight too. I think haven't you? I don't know about that. No. Well, I'll I think the thing. Candy later. I think the thing with uh, cleanses, and I, mean, I don't want to give too much personal details away, but I'm a like currently I just quit my job, but I was a post and sec, uh, post secondary instructor, and I would talk to my class about the truth about certain things like like detox diets and things like that, because you have like you have your liver and your kidneys right that detox your bo- body naturally, unless you are on something like like unless you've been on drugs or alcohol, which is what they used to detox you from to get those poisons out of your body you feel better when you go on cleanses because typically you're eating better foods and you usually lose weight because you're eating better foods but as soon as you go off of that and you start eating the foods again you're going to gain that weight yeah well that's more what this is is than a cleanse actually i think what it is is we do it for a couple weeks and then she starts introducing certain things to check for triggers Oh, so you're doing like a sensitivity, a sensitivity check. I see, I see. But it looks like she's just going to stick with it now because you feel so good after a couple (laughs) weeks that it's like, well, might as well just do this all the time. But it also has so so many vegetables. You had a video on like the ketogenic diet, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, yeah, we've been thinking about doing a vegan one as well because uh, just the op, uh, the opposing side of that because that's another polarized topic which i don't know where to totally interesting. where to stand on you know i've done both so i've been keto now for oh. a month and i was keto oh. before and i had been v ve- i tried the vegan diet oh, for wow. three months too so i've done i've done both and okay. it's very interesting do you want to do yes. i know it has nothing to do with my channel no 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 that's like good because that, it's but. we we talk about it all the time and it's personally very relevant to me because i'm stuck right now not knowing which way to go and i just really i'm in a bit of a trap where I'm not doing a good diet at all right now. So, so yeah, we'd so, love to hear it. Yeah. So the science behind keto is really interesting because if you look at like lab mice, when they, um, when you starve and not starve an animal, but you fast it, right. It t- typically lives for longer. It yep. has a longer lifespan. Um, I believe that they'll have the same effect when they test like keto, like low carb diets on mice too, because it's glycation, um, that ages you is that, that sugar process. And it's the same reason why there's, um, they found that that drug called metformin that they give to diabetics is prolonging the life in lab rats who are on it and why diabetics aren't dying at the same time that they used to. Mm. It's because this helps with, um, insulin and helps your hormones communicate better. So what keto is, is it makes you run on ketones rather than on sugar, mm-hmm. right? So you're not having, so your, your body goes into the kind of the starvation mode as it would as if you're fasting. So you're kind of, it's kind of like a, a biohack, so to speak in that way. And right? the fasting has been shown to be very, very good as well. So that's kind of, it, it, they're similar in that way, right? Yeah. I, be, I believe it's because you would be in ketosis either way. So I think it's, it's like fasting, but you can do it for longer because you're not getting the same uh, cravings because you can still eat, right? Because you're still yeah. eating your proteins and your fats. Yeah. So you're getting you're getting all the benefits of that without having the same like kind of lethargy and uh, weakness. So that's what's really cool about it. I just find the science behind it fascinating. Uh, and then with vegan is it's the total opposite of keto because now you have a low fat, 
high carb diet. So I did both and I was, I did it with blood work too. So I wouldn't have my oh, blood wow. work done before I did both. I'm just one of those people, right? Like I need numbers. I like to ex- do this kind of uh, experiments on myself, right? I'll be the guinea pig. Um, Cause the doctor told me I had high cholesterol. I mean, I'm a normal a BMI, I would say somewhat active person, um, but just genetically, like my mother had high cholesterol, uh, uncles had high cholesterol, just runs in my family. So they said, okay, you need, to, you shouldn't have this at your age and, and your weight. You should be, you should have normal cholesterol. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to go vegan for three months because they, they say that there's no cholesterol in the vegan diet. So okay. you should be able to lower it, right? Because you're not intaking any animal fats or anything, right? Um, my cholesterol went up after three months. Oh my triglycerides my went up. And it, it's just, it's like all I've been eating is vegetable. And I gained weight actually on the vegan diet. Um, so now I'm on keto. I've been on it for a month. I'm down 10 pounds and my cholesterol is now down to almost normal. That's crazy. So, I mean, that's the other problem with this, these measurements now is that if you heard about the conspiracy on the cholesterol at all, and I mean, I'm not saying it's true or not, but I mean, they did all these tests on everybody and the, the numbers were lower than they expected. So they dropped the fucking bar to meet the numbers, you know, instead of just saying that cholesterol is not such an issue as they thought. Oh, to push statin drugs? Yeah. Like to push farms? Yeah. Um, I, w- I wouldn't doubt it. I, yeah. scientists do that sort of thing all the time. And that's the same with the atrazine, with the testosterone that's lowering and the sperm counts that are lowering. Now they're just like, okay, well, now that everyone has this, we're just going to call this the new normal. Yeah. So wow. rather so than that admit w- that it's dropping, exa- right? They're exactly. just like, no, it's just normal now. Yeah. And cholesterol, it, they don't even know if that 100% causes is, is heart, linked to no, heart attack. Exactly. They don't, and now they're thinking, well, it could be carbs, it could be sugar that raises cholesterol, which obviously makes sense for with what happened to me. So it's like everything's backwards, and they've just they just continue to sell it to people. Yeah. So what about? I mean, there there seems to be a real pushback from the the vegans as well. I mean, with that with uh, some of the, it, it seems like a bit of a science battle as well. You hear arguments that are seem good on both sides, but so for me, I've I've had. I just went in to get my kidneys checked a little bit and, and the doctor, you know, the, it really didn't seem scientific. He was kind of humming and hawing and he went through my whole background. He couldn't find any reason except for maybe the odd supplements and some like, uh, BCAAs that I, that I drink, like some amino acids and stuff like that. But he couldn't even, he was like, it's just between this number and this number means that it was very unscientific for me to start looking at major changes because it just, it just wasn't. It wasn't cut and dry, well, you know? Well, so- here, here's the thing about medicine. And I mean, I I worked within that field for a while. It's, it's not magic. It's not an exact science. It's just a bunch of smart people who said, okay, well, this is what normal should be based on averages. Yeah. Right? So, like, you go to a doctor. He's not a magician. He's just an educated person. That's it. And they get it wrong sometimes, too. And science... Like even in medicine, they don't have everything 100 percent and they're working off of um, they're working off of the research of pharmaceutical companies that make money, too. Right. So they're they're pushing things out. And sometimes I, it almost feels like pharmaceutical companies. Well, obviously, they, they they don't have the same scruples. Right. So they it's possible that they lie about things and try to cover that up and push that as reality to sell things. Oh, yeah. You've heard from those those whistleblowers that used to work for big pharma. I mean, it's it's insane. The stories that you hear about how they push the stuff on doctors. So and I mean, obviously, you're having a heart attack, go to the hospital and get Western medicine, right? Like there are certain cases where the, you need that to save your life. Yeah. But but like when people are, are taking eight pills a day for chronic uh, issues. Yeah. But, well, yeah. And it just keeps getting worse. And now you're taking this to treat this symptom and then this to treat this symptom. Now you have to tr- take another one to calm the reaction that you're getting from the first medication. That's where there's issues. So, so speak it. So back to the thing then. So my protein levels are usually high and my creatine levels as well. And then, and then, um, and I've sort of experimented a little bit with keto, uh, or at least low carb and then low wheat and, and no gluten. I've kind of been back and forth on that, but I haven't really hit anything with full, full bore. So then I was trying to decide whether to go vegan or keto or just to try something, you know, healthier than what I'm doing right now. What do you, would you recommend either, either one for now? It, it depends on what you're trying to do. So if you want to, I would say I probably felt the best when I was vegan. I probably 
Um, felt the best, every, like mentally every, or like, physically? Like everything felt like it worked better. My skin looked great. Uh, I felt healthy. I felt like my body was clean. I don't, it sounds stupid, but I, I felt, I felt good. I had good energy. However, I noticed the biggest results with keto. And if you have problems like sleeping, um, it, it, it helps me fall. Like I, I don't have anxiety. I don't have insomnia anymore. Um, the first, definitely the first few weeks you'll have brain fog, you'll have headaches. You feel like this is awful. Cause the you kind of, well, yeah. And it, it's kind of just like, as everyone's addicted to sugar and your body's used to running off of that fuel, right? So your body's saying something's wrong here. I'm not getting the, the fuel I need, even though you won't feel hungry. So you, you don't have as much craving. Like I could go without breakfast and go to almost dinner and not think about food when I'm on keto because I don't have those sugar crashes. Right. So everything's different. I mean, if you want to lose weight, keto, hundred percent, they put morbidly obese people on keto and to lose weight before like gastric bypasses, both diets are extremely hard. Like there's like, you're cutting out two food groups on either side, basically, right? With keto, you're cutting out fruit and you're cutting out grain. You're cutting out rice, potatoes, chips. You can say goodbye to them. And then with vegan, you're cutting out dairy, you're cutting out meat. So either way, they're both challenging. So if you just set out, like, I'm going to do my best with this, I'm going to try my hardest. If I cheat maybe once a week, whatever, I'll get back onto it. That's the only way you can do it is, is to not knock it down on yourself if you if you fail yeah. and to keep keep doing it what about your cognitive functioning so when you meant when you said you felt a little bit better on vegan like physically like cleaner that kind of thing was there was there a, a cognitive enhancement on keto at all like a little bit sharper or better memory any noticeable effect there i think keto at first you feel worse like you get a yeah. bit of brain fog and I don't know if I, I'm there yet where I'm like, oh, After yes, that, my, yeah. my, my brain is right. But a lot of people do say that they like they think clearer once they've been on keto for a couple months. So time will tell, I guess. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, it's fascinating that you're talking about that now because I'm really in that spot right now where I, I don't know what to do. So. Yeah, no, I mean, it's nothing to do with nothing to do with what I normally talk about, but I, I, I'm interested in many, many things. So. Yeah, I love the biohacking aspect. It's something I've been I've been uh, obsessed with, like not so much in the last couple of months, but for the last year or so. I mean, we even did a segment on the show where I was experimenting on myself with certain things and I got into some of the biohackers like that, that Tristan Haggard would talked about the keto and Ben Greenfield and these guys that are doing what you're doing where they're guinea pigs on themselves. And there's a lot of really cool science and a lot of um, advancements going on with people with natural, natural biohacks to help for sleep and all this kind of stuff. So it's, um, it's cool to hear you doing that as well. Yeah. And I would say if you're going to do something, uh, give it a good go, give it, give it at least one month, if not three for you to notice the difference say in like blood work. Yeah. That's usually, usually what they say. You'll need a minimum of three months before you'll notice your cholesterol's lowering or, or whatever. So don't give up after a week cause it's hard sort of thing. Right on. Well, yeah, yeah, this has been a great chat. And um, <laughs> is there anything else you want to mention before we wrap it up? No, I think it's just, it's just I don't even know what you're going to label this because we just kind of talked about a little bit of everything, but it's been, it's been lots of fun. So thanks for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. And yeah, we just, we, uh, we'll just, you know, we'll throw a few, a few keywords in the label and, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, when you're in, if you're ever in Calgary or whatever, yeah, drop by the studio and, and take a look and we'll do one, one of these things in person. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Sounds yeah. great. Yeah, we'll keep okay, an eye. Well, we'll keep an eye on your channel, and we'll link to it in the show notes and all that good stuff. Okay. Well, thank you, yeah. and have a great night. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs> okay. Bye. That was a chat with the cat. That was awesome. Yeah, that was a great one. That was inspiring. You are inspired? I am. To what? Try. For food? Yeah. Yeah, I'm starving right now. But. Yeah. Thing right now. Think of it as fasting. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, big thanks to the cat for coming on the show. It was a fun chat. Good chat. We yeah. should enjoy that one. We'll trigger a couple of people, I'm yeah. sure. We're sorry we triggered you. I just love it. Talking about a bunch of things we want to talk about. You know, free that's speech, it. atrazine, biohacking, and the diets, and the political stuff, and the mainstream media bullshit. All that fun stuff. Yeah. All the kind of fun stuff we couldn't talk about if we had a bunch of fucking sponsors and commercials and that Yeah, bullshit. if we relied on YouTube and it's uh, 
we'd be fucked. We'd be mm. out of business. Luckily, we rely on you guys. Head on over to grimerica.ca slash support and support the show uh, if you can. Sign up for monthly. Uh, there's everything there from a buck a month to 30 bucks a month. Pick one of those if it so fits you. And you'll get access to the Black Budget feed. Of course, you can do a one-time donation just as well. And if you can't afford to support the show monetarily, uh, you can share the show, review the show, tell your friends. There's a bunch of stuff. Sign some people up for the newsletter. Spam the show. Spam gram. Spam gram. So do all that stuff, because it does really help. And if you can, do please sign up for a monthly. That helps too. Right on. All right, guys. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.
see what you can find Everything that you could ever need to know It's in the show notes Everything that you could ever need to know About this particular show It's in the show notes Show notes, show notes, show notes, show notes, show notes